Okay, let's get started. I'd like to formally welcome you all to our Appulate Uplink webinar. I will be your host today, Vanessa Julia Kamara, the Training Director at Appulate. Also on the line, we have uh, some contributors, Dimitri Nikolain, our CTO, and Kevin Kelly, our National Sales Manager. They will be uh, presenting along with me today and here to answer any of your questions. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Kevin Kelly here. So on the agenda today, we do have, uh, we're going to go over webinar logistics so that you understand how the webinar will work and how you can ask any of your questions. We're going to tell you what Appulate and Emplink are all about. We're going to go over a workflow chart so that you can understand uh, very clearly what we're showing to you today. We're going to take you right into a demo so that you can see it in action. We're going to tell you about our different solutions that we have to offer you, some system compatibility, why to choose Appulate, what makes it unique any next steps and contact informa information that we feel is important for you to have, and then we'll open it up for questions. So webinar logistics, due to the size of the webinar, you're all muted at this time. We do want you to be able to answer or ask your questions, so do stick around till the end. We'll have a Q&A session. Uh, Dimitri and Kevin will stick around to answer any of your questions. In the, meet, in the meanwhile, so that you don't forget, you can start to type in your questions in the GoToMeeting side panel as you go, and again, we'll get to those at the end. Or feel free to raise your hand. We can actually unmute you once it comes time to ask questions. You can ask your question out loud to the group. The meeting will take about 45 minutes to an hour, including Q&A. All right, so Appulate, we uh, were founded in 2005. We offer connectivity to streamline business processes by bridging data between insurance systems. And we're actually one of the fastest growing tech companies that serve the insurance industry today. We're going to be talking to you today about Uplink, which is a best of breed upload technology. And it's very simple to use. It just allows your agents or you internally to print an accord form and get that bridged over into your portals or your back office systems or your policy admin systems. So there's two different types of workflows. Uh, one is in an internal perspective, one is an external perspective. So the one I'm showing on my screen right now is actually the one from uh, your external perspective, how your agents may be using Appulate to submit to you. So this one actually starts from a management system. They would print the Accord form to the Appulate uplink, and all of the information, Accords and final notice of loss, will get taken to your system. Again, whether that's your back-end system, your portal, or your policy admin system. Alternatively, if you do not want their workflow to change, they can also email you the Accord forms, and you can use this through your uh, back-end system or, or internally. So you can actually take the Accord form, and you can uplink it uh, to your back-end system. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to open up a PDF here on my screen, the PDF of an Accord form. Typically, you would get this via email, and you would print the Accord form, and you simply choose the Appulate Uplink as your printer option. Once you print, it will ask you to confirm your Appulate credentials. So you'll plug those in the first time. Next time, it will store it for you. Click Send and it's going to open up Appulate for you automatically, take you to the uh, document pre-processing screen. Then it will take you to a page where you will be listed here as a market. You simply have to make sure that it's selected, which it automatically does. And once you hit send, it actually takes uh, the information, gives you a link to click on. Once you click the link, it takes you again right into your back-end system, your portal, your policy admin system, where it actually loads all of the Accord data. So if your agent is using this, they don't have to rekey any Accord data to get it over to you. If you're using it internally, you don't have to actually uh, sit there and type in all of the information that you're receiving uh, via email from your agents. 
Uh, well, so let me just kind of add a few words here just uh, to make sure everyone is on the same page. Um, um, so um, it, there is, um, so Vanessa showed you kind of the basic upload functionality and let's, I guess it's worth mentioning as uh, Vanessa alluded to, so there are different workflows there. So one where retail agent uh, that uh, works with you want to upload data into your portal or point of sale system. So in that case, they may start from the agency management system. Uh, they can um, uh, print that court form off of the agency management system as, and as Vanessa showed, uh, through a few clicks, end up in your portal solution uh, and continue on with the process uh, in your portal um, following the functionality there. But the advantage there is obviously that they don't have to rekey the data into a system. Alternatively, again, they don't have to use the print driver. For example, they can email uh, to the predefined email box that we would set up for you, like uh, your, um, your MGA, your carrier name at opulate.com. And, and uh, basically at that point, the email response back would come back to them and, and they will be able to proceed on into your system. And a third scenario, if they, let's say, emailed your submission uh, by email, and so then you internally would use the system to key the data in, well, to use, uh, to use Uplink to, to load the data into your backend system. Would it be a policy admin system? Would it be your agency management system, like AIM or Nextshare? Um, and, um, and so you don't have to rekey it and then proceed. So we kind of cover both scenarios. And just kind of an important highlight, print driver is certainly a way, a very convenient way to do this, but that's not the only option. We also provide submission by email. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Dimitri. Also, uh, we're pre-integrated implementation, or we have pre-integrated implementation with AIM, Epic Premier, Nexture, Insurity, uh, Agency Port, First Best, Accenture, Duckery, Tropics, uh, just to name a few. So I'm going to jump back over to our slides here, and I'm going to kick this off to Kevin Kelly, who's going to talk to us about our solutions and our system compatibility. Kevin? Thanks, Vanessa. Uh, yeah, as Dimitri just alluded to, uh, the box on the left, uh, there are options for the uplink and the email. And the illustration that you saw went to a uh, someone's self-designed portal. Appulate also has its own portal design programs. So we can put your programs online. We can build out a portal with rating, appetite guides. It's branded to you, uh, very affordable. It's ex there'll be a, a webinars on that. That's really kind of beyond the scope of this particular webinar. But it's important to note if you're considering putting your programs online that we can build that portal for you. And it comes with the options that we talked about for uplink or email. And again, to just refill on that uplink is agent goes to management system, hits print, lands in your portal, all the information is there. The email option is agent emails you an app. We intercept that email, pull the information from the app, load it to the portal, respond with a link that the agent clicks on. So within a minute, he gets an email back saying, you know, thank you for your submission. We love you. Click here to finish it. And they click there, all filled out, and it's business as usual. The other point that uh, Dimitri went that we talked about as well is that back office processing. Now, when you get the back office processing, you're accepting, you're just getting an email from an agent. It's an Outlook email with an app attached to it. And it'd be really nice if those apps were all you know, pretty and neat and clean and generated right from a management system, but we all know the reality is half the time they're crooked, they're scanned, they're faxed, you can't even hardly read them. That would be our bullet number two there, OCR. We do support an optical character recognition tool that allows, that, that takes our system, reads those faxed and scanned images, converts it to XML, and then uses the web services to get it into your backend system. Now, it's important to note that handwritten apps, we just draw the line on that. And uh, hopefully, if you are having agents that send you handwritten apps, you can encourage them to use your portal, and then they have a place to type it. But <coughs> Excuse me. So do you want to go to the next slide, Vanessa? Let me, let, me, let me just add a few words there, um, uh, if, I'm, if you can go back there, Vanessa, just for a second, um, to, to the slides. Um, so uh, just, just to kind of make a point a little expand on the OCR versus the regular uplink, from the user perspective, uh, whoever's using the system, it's kind of transparent to you whether this is what we call a native PDF or whether it's a scanned image. The, the end result is the same. You start with, with an accord form 
and you upload it, and we kind of take care of all, all their nitty-gritty technical uh, issues having to do with we need a uh, scanned uh, court form or whether it's what we call a native. So when a scanned uh, um, a court form um, is, um, is in play, then obviously um, you know, the process may not be as accurate uh, as if it was electronically produced, but still it's a very practical solution. It works very well. And in terms of the user flow, it's uh, pretty much the same uh, to what Vanessa showed you earlier. Thank you. That's all. Yep. Thanks, Dimitri. Thanks, Thank Kevin. You. Let me jump over to the next slide for you, okay. Kevin. Yep. Where we're going next is you're about to see a slide of the systems that we support. What people don't realize is it would seem simple to just take an Accord 125 and, and convert it to XML and, and it worked for all the Accord 125 forms. The reality is is that each of the different management systems out there support a variety of different versions of those of that, for example, 125 form or 130 form. You'll notice across the top of the screen you'll see four numbers. Those are the Accord numbers that we support. And down the left side are the actual systems that generate those forms. So this is this is what we call our inventory. Once we've gone through and done a AMS 360 Accord 130 and mapped it to an XML, it stays that way. It's, it, it's going to stay that way until AMS makes any changes to it. And when those changes come up, we're responsible for managing that, not you. So as you scroll down through the list, you can see that some of the systems, I, I know that we go back 12, 15 years on some of the management systems that are out there because, you know, TAM version 7.1, for example, produced a form. It's producing that form the same way today. So we've coded the XML, we've got it, it's in our inventory. That's where we have a little edge on some of the uh, newcomers to the space is that they're not going to go back 15 years or 10 years and, and code all those old forms. But we all know agencies still use those systems. They use, there's a lot of agencies out there that use them. So it's just, you know, this inventory is an important consideration. Another point I like to make is you see right in the middle there's a different color checkboxes. Though that's a particular form that we've just seen for the first time. Again, it's on us, it's not on you. When that you hit the button and upload this form or the agent does it, it's going to respond that that's not yet a supported form to try again later. And that form goes to our engineers. We code that form, do it, put it in testing, that's why it's yellow, uh, for a couple of weeks and then give it a general release. That's when it gets the blue checkbox. So again, it's up to us. It's not something that's going to come back to you and say, you need to go to Appulate and tell them to fix this after they already knows about it. So. Again, that's our inventory, and, and uh, as we'll mention towards the end, you'll, we're going to follow up with some information, and I'm going to include a uh, link to this so you can see all the different systems that we support and all the different forms. Uh, okay, let me just add to it as well that different accord forms obviously correspond to different insurance lines, and so for those uh, you know um, uh, of you who are familiar with that, you know, accord 130, for example, is a workers' compensation. 126 would be general liability. 140 is commercial property. So, um, what, so what we're highlighting here is that basically solutions can be used uh, for a variety of different lines, including personal lines as well. So Accord 80, that would be your um, home, personal homeowner's app. Accord 90 uh, would be uh, your uh, personal auto app. So we have a, a number of customers that are using it for commercial lines, um, for all the different lines, umbrella, uh, general liability package, property, commercial auto, uh, et cetera, as well as personal lines. Accord 1, 2, and 3 refers to a first notice of loss. So, uh, so the same kind of uh, uh, method can be applied to upload first notice of loss for lines uh, GL property and workers' comp um, if you upload um, the Accord 1, 2, and 3. Thank you. Okay, next slide. So to continue on a little bit more about the system compatibility, you know, there are other options out there for upload. And the thing we like to point out is that our solution fits with all the different systems out there. You're not having to buy multiple solutions to support different systems. Because again, as you know, the agencies have a lot of choices in their retail agency management systems. And you want to be able to accommodate all of those agencies that gets you much better adoption rate. So I did want to make another final point too that you know we mentioned uh, a few times that the agent has the option of using the print driver or he has the option of using the uh, or just emailing an app in case you don't want to 
change this experience. Those agents that use the French driver, we have over 20,000 agencies that have installed and used that print driver. And it's kind of a footnote, again, beyond the scope of this particular webinar, but worth mentioning, is those agents are interested in the programs that you have. If you're an MGA with a special program for, you know, furniture stores or whatever, you know, that, that network of agencies is available to you to make an announcement that says, you know, if these guys support the Appulate Uplink system, if you have a furniture store, add them as a market to your system and or contact them for a, an agency appointment. Uh, our adoption rates have been just phenomenal and that's I know a big concern over some of the other options that are out there and worth mentioning. So that's it for me, but I see you going. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me add a couple of uh, things on this slide as well. Um, so there are, there are a variety of different reasons why would you want to use Uplink or, uh, versus uh, other alternative solutions like, for example, Trustac Now, which is, um, uh, which is a word for product to uh, electronically upload data from their family of agency management system. And Transformation Stations uh, is obviously from, from Applied. So what, what we're trying to highlight here that if, uh, if you want to enhance your point of sale system for your retail agents with connectivity from the agency management system. You can certainly, you know, get Transact Now and you can certainly get Transformation Station. So the reason why you may want to choose Uplink, uh, you know, some of our customers do it simply for mundane economical reasons. You know, uh, tra Transformation Station, uh, pretty, you know, expensive uh, uh, products and you have to buy them, tw uh, you have to buy both of them. So you need to license Transact Now to get connectivity from Vertifor family of agency management system, and then you need to license Transformation Station to um, to get connectivity from uh, uh, from Applied family of agency management system. But there is still a, vari a variety of smaller um, uh, agency management systems out there that's not part of Vertifor, not part of Applied. And uh, you know, for those agents, um, it's kind of um, you don't have a solution unless uplink, unless you buy an uplink. So some of our customers choose to uplink. Uh, in addition to transactional transformation station, they want to give the uh, agent kind of the choice, and uh, if they prefer to use transact now, you know, do so, and, uh, and if they apply transformation station, uh, do so as well. But um, uh, but they may use uplink to fill in the gaps, if you will. Uh, where uh, for those um, agency management systems that are not covered for Transact Now Transformation Station, they can use Uplink. In addition to Uplink, uh, can be used internally. So uh, you uh, basically uh, kill uh, you know several birds with one stone with Uplink solution. So you extend the solution to your retail agents, and you can use it internally if your agents prefer to email you the apps and if they scanned images then obviously neither Transact Now nor Transformation Station can help you with those. Uplink, you know, with the one license solution to, you know, cover, uh, you know, cover all those different usage scenarios. So, um, and um, again, just to summarize my point, you know, you may choose Uplink in addition to Transact Now Transformation Station just to cover the use case scenarios that uh, those two systems do not cover or cover or do not cover all the different agency management system, or you can choose Uplink as your sole solution, uh, and you know simply for economic reasons. So why Appulate? What makes us unique? Uh, well, we're one size fits all. So again, as we stressed, it works with any agency management system on the market today, which is huge. Uh, it uses a Cord XML standard to send the Accord supplemental data lost data endorsements, FNL, FNOL, everything over uh, using a Cord XML standard. It's back office processing, so again, it can be used as an internal tool for converting the forms to a Cord XML, and there's no transaction fees, which is great. What agents are saying, it's a quick download. So as uh, Kevin Kelly mentioned, it's very easy for an agent to simply download it, which takes less than, 10, uh, less than one minute, and actually just print go to Uplink and they're done. It actually just takes all of the information over, saving the agent and CSRs a tremendous amount of time. We can do bulk uploads of policies and most importantly, it's at no cost to your agent so that you can use this uh, platform for free. Um, so let me, let me add to it, uh, when I say, if you don't mind. Um, so um, one thing is important to uh, um, kind of discuss is why do we need an, an upload solution in the first place? And a lot of uh, carriers and MGAs, you know, to streamline their uh, processes, started adding uh, portal solutions into kind of the mix of the point of sale system. 
So 10 of, you know, 15 years ago, uh, internet was not as widespread and uh, pretty much all the business was done by email. So at that point, retail agents primarily would just email a court apps and, you know, other information to their markets, to the carrier MGAs, and uh, wait for the quote back. Um, so all their uh, all their um, all the overhead of keying this data in from those apps into the carriers into the uh, to the MGAs fell on on their shoulders. So carriers and MGA employed uh, you know a whole department of people doing the data entry, so receiving those submissions and rekeying the data into uh, into the internal system to produce the quotes. Now, um, when uh, when the portal solution got introduced by uh, again by carriers and MGAs. Uh, they didn't really solve the data entry issue. They simply shifted the work from the retail agent onto, uh, I mean, from themselves onto the retail agent. So before, retail agents would email um, their court apps and other information to, you know, five or six markets that they do business with in order to get uh, a kind of a, um, a competitive quote from, from different markets. Uh, now, uh, with introduction of uh, portals, the process have become, uh, you know, much more laborious for retail agents. It's, uh, so before they would email, again, you know, five or six emails and wait for the quote. Now they have to go to the carrier A, spend, you know, 15 minutes keying the data. Carrier B, uh, spend 15, 20 minutes keying the data. Carrier C, spending 15 or 20 minutes uh, rekeying the data. So all of a sudden, just, just to get a quote, uh, they need to spend, uh, you know, one hour to, you know, two hours doing, um, uh, you know, worth of the data entry. And if you do the math, you know, if, if they work, for example, on average, you know, $500 commission, but it's a 10% chance of closing, so they basically spend, you know, hour to two hours worth of data entry just, just to earn $50. And you can see how, you know, that's, you know, the economics of that starts breaking down. And that's why agents have been very reluctant to, uh, Adopt um, point of sale solutions from uh, from from the carriers for for that for that simple reason. So what what our solution provides uh, is a convenient way for for the agent to submit business to you. So you can still leverage your point of sale system and and reap the benefits of of the efficiency that that provides without introducing uh, the overhead and burden on on the retail agent side to key the data. In, in, into your system. So, and put yourself kind of in the shoes of your retail agent. If, if, if he can get a quote from, from a carrier with, sim with simple upload, you know, within in a few keystrokes and can get a quote within a minute versus another carrier where he needs to go in and spend 20, you know, 30 minutes of doing data entry, where he will likely to go to first. I mean, and where he would, um, you know, follow the path of least resistance. He will just say, okay, well, look, I, I'm just going to submit it to this carriage simply because it's so simple and I can get quotes so quicker, uh, so much quicker. So, um, so efficiency is obviously, um, uh, you know, uh, is the reason why, but it also can be um, used as a leverage to, um, uh, to, um, to draw more agents to submit to you. And um, so that's, uh, you know, it's kind of an important point to highlight as well. Thank you. So some next steps for you. Uh, we do have a proof of concept available upon request. You can have some of your agents actually download the uplink and test it out. They can use it to transmit accord forms to you. We can send the data to the location of your choice. And it typically, it typically takes the agent fewer than 10 minutes to do this. So here's some contact information for you on the screen. As I mentioned earlier, Kevin Kelly and Kathy, our sales team, will actually reach out to you after the webinar. They'll include the link to the recording that you can share with your colleagues. It will also be posted to our YouTube page. But feel free to copy down any of this contact information and reach out to them directly. Our sales at activate.com email address will go out to all of our sales team. If you would rather email uh, the person in your region, we have uh, Kevin Kelly in the Western region, kkelly at appulate.com is his contact information. And Eastern region, we have Kathy Trimble, ktrimble at appulate.com. Feel free to email them directly. So at this time, we'd like to open it up for a chat session with Appulate. Dimitri Nikolin will answer any of your technical questions, and Kevin Kelly will answer any sales questions. 
So again, just raise your hand and I can actually go to you, unmute you. I'll mention your name so that you know that you're unmuted and you can actually ask your question out loud to the group and Kevin and Dimitri will answer your questions. Or you can simply uh, type in your questions in the GoToMeeting side panel question section as you can see on my screen here. And of course, if you have any questions after the webinar, you can always email our sales team, sales at appulate.com. They'd be happy to answer those for you. So we're going to go ahead and start off with the first uh, call for questions. We have some questions coming in. I'm going to get to those now. We have our first hand raised. We'll start there. Let's see. Okay. Rhonda, Rhonda Colley, you are unmuted. Go ahead and ask your question. Um, around the proof of concept, we were just curious, um, what is the effort between uh, that app, the information being sent in to us from the agents, because the adoption with the agents has been one of our concerns, so if we were able to do this proof of concept with a couple of them, how does that happen exactly? Uh, all right. Well, uh, yes, uh, it's a great question. So, um, uh, so basically, typically, um, uh, if uh, you know, depending on what your backend system is, so uh, we would interact either with your own internal technology team or with uh, or with your vendor of your solution, and to you know make sure we have the connectivity. So we provide the data in accord XML, and maybe it's you know a system that we already have a pre-built support with, like Vanessa mentioned, maybe Duck Creek or AIM or um, uh, you know, a variety of different other ones that we already have, or uh, you know, we may need to engage with your vendor to implement this solution. So, um, and so once we've done that, the next question is to engage your agents, and again, we'll work with you uh, in training. You can identify the specific agencies that uh, you have close relationship with, perhaps, and have them try it. So, Vanessa is usually involved in training those agents, having them, um, helping them to set up their Plink Print driver, setting up the account, and all that stuff. So, we're very open to that, and uh, uh, we'll work with you through that process. And just a guesstimate on the effort behind that. I mean, I, I can't see my my IT department really spending. Uh, well, again, so yeah, the effort is, it, it really depends. So some of the systems, uh, and, and you know, on a case-by-case -case basis, some of the systems um, uh, that, you, uh, that, that you have may already have a module that able to accept a code XML, uh, which is in this standard. Perhaps you already have an implementation, it's not like now transformation station. Uh, we can just plug right into that. If, uh, if, if your system happens to be one that, uh, you know, one that we already mentioned, uh, we can, you know, work with those uh, vendors that uh, we already have the relationship with, and they already have those modules available. So that would be uh, perhaps another option. If uh, if uh, if neither of those options is available, maybe it's your homegrown system, or maybe a system that we haven't built the support for. Yeah, it may take, um, you know, some time for to engage your IT team uh, to to do the mapping for the proof of concept. I guess you don't have to do the full mapping. You can do, you know, just a few fields to reduce the amount of um, effort for you uh, to do this build. Uh, we also have relationship with a variety of different third-party system integrators uh, that we've engaged in the past, and um, so uh, there may be, um, you know, an effort. Uh, I mean, you can you can engage their help. Um, you know, it's hard for me to be any more specific. You know, it's going to take you X amount of hours. You know, it goes on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, but uh, we'll work with you, and I think you'll 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 find it uh, you know, uh, very efficient. Okay. And that list of um, systems and vendors is Guidewire by any chance in that list? Um, we we haven't had an implementation with Guidewire yet. Uh, we are in the current talks. Actually, had a conversation yesterday um, with one of the third party. Uh, 
uh, system integrators that's working with GuideWire. So we'll be working on a proof of concept with them. Um, so, uh, but uh, no, right now it's not available out of the box yet. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rhonda. So we'll move on to some other questions here. Uh, all right, so if a carrier doesn't support XML reading, does that mean that the information cannot be uplinked to their system? Um, okay, great question. Yes, the, the system requires to accept data in the core XML. That's how we provide the data. So the options are either, you know, that um, system vendor would, you know, work with us in building that, that module in uh, there are other third-party uh, vendor solutions who specialize in adding um, their um, Accord XML capability to, to, their, uh, to their systems, and we'll gladly refer you uh, to them if you, if you contact us. From an agent's point of view that uses Epic, what does Appulate provide that we are not already using or doing through their real-time feature? Well, so Appulate is independent uh, from any um, uh, from any vendor solution, including Epic. So it's uh, uh, it, you know one way it's a print drive, another one relies on email. But basically, um, your agent uh, would simply need to install a print driver if uh, that's how, uh, and they would simply print the Accord form off of Epic and follow the steps uh, that Vanessa showed. Uh, in this demo to upload the data in, into a system. So it's simply as simple as from Epic getting to a point where they're able to print their court forms and then select an Appulate uplink as a print driver and then follow the steps. Alternatively, they would, uh, you know, get those accord form again from Epic and then email them, uh, email them to you and then we support that as well. What happens after the form makes it to the carrier? So when we convert the data in a core XML, um, obviously uh, it depends on the implementation. So we would work either with the vendor um, or uh, you know your own internal IT team. But in typical implementation, uh, the data would get transferred into your backend system, whether that would be your policy issuing system or what, perhaps it could be your uh, portal uh, slash point of sale system. So the idea there that we simply uh, provide breach, so the data will uh, flow either from the agency management system or from their core PDF into whatever that backend system is, and then whoever the user of the system is, whether that's an outside retail agent or whether that's your internal underwriter or CSR, uh, they would get into your system and they would see all the data there. So, and they would proceed with following the user interface, the workflow that they typically uh, uh, follow when they when they uh, when they process the submission, but except for they wouldn't have to rekey all the data, so they will see all the data there. If there's any missing data, uh, they'll be able to add it and follow you know whatever user interface that you have for that process. But uh, again, the benefit is they just would not have to rekey a lot of the data that would just automatically kind of uh, go through uh, from those accord form through populate into your system. Okay, let's go to a hand raised uh, by Michael Stango. Michael, you are unmuted. Go ahead and ask your question. Hello, yes. Um, we are actually going out next week to uh, put Appulate and Beam up on some machines at one of our agents' um, places of work. And I was just curious, I was reading through some instructions and it almost seems like you didn't need to install Appulate on every workstation. Is it possible to just install this on the management system itself? Well, so if you mentioned BeamUp, then I presume you're Tropics customer. So exactly. Tropics is, um, yeah, is one of the vendors that we have a very tight integration with and you probably uh, you probably didn't even have to license our solution explicitly. You kind of uh, uh, it was part of uh, part of your uh, purchase of of Tropic solution. Um, yeah, you've got so, it. Uh, okay, so um, if uh, if 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 you want to extend uh, the solution to your retail agents, the typical you know the recommended way for us is to install the print driver on 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 the machine, and that's how we have it. Uh, implemented with, um, uh, with with Tropics as well. We believe that provides kind of the most secure and and, and the most um, 
uh, streamline approach. Uh, I do need to, uh, and we can take it offline, whether or not whether Tropics supports submission by email. Uh, just if, um, I, I don't have the answer on the top of my head right now, so but we can take it offline. Okay, so it would need to be put on each independent workstation, though. Uh, it, correct. If uh, if if they, uh, I believe that their implementation relies on Apple Print Driver. So in that case, yes, uh, the agent okay. would need to. Uh, so it's a typically you know 10 seconds installation. So they just click on a link, and so we work with. Uh, Tropics customers, where we send out an email to the agents, where it's simple, you know, simple as clicking a link, and I mean, it's simple as installing Adobe Reader, right? So you just go right, on the web, right. click there, ten seconds, boom, it's done. So it's literally that simple. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. We have several questions, so we'll just keep going down the list here. Uh, do you interface with insurance policy decisions? Yes, we have implementation um, with Insurity, so one of them is Zurich. Uh, so we don't have a direct relationship with Insurity. So and uh, in implementation that we were involved in, uh, they engage a third party to uh, to do kind of the bridging. So and so one of the third parties is um, um, is, is Next Step that was purchased by Ivans uh, Applied, but. Uh, so we don't have a direct relationship with, with um, uh, Insurity again, but uh, we have implementations, and we can refer you to uh, the vendors who were involved in that implementation. Great. Uh, can you explain more about the bulk uploading of policies? So bulk upload refers to um, uh, what we call like a book roll type of uh, scenario. In our case, it would still be on on a kind of one by one basis. So there is we don't have a solution where you can you know add some module, let's say to MS360 or Epic, and say hey bulk bulk upload all those policies. Somebody would have to go in and upload policy one by one. You know there's still a huge advantage from uh, you know, doing it uh, that way, so versus having to rekey hundred, you know, policies for you know for the book roll type of scenario, uh, you you know you click, you know, quote unquote, print hundred times versus having to rekey hundred policies. But uh, but that's uh, that's how our book roll solution works. Okay. Uh, but if your system is XML based and we will work off an Accord application. Even if it's homegrown. Yeah, if if the uh, system is home, uh, if the system is homegrown and and it's not Accord based, um, so the reason why you you would want to use a solution uh, like Howers and it still provide a lot of benefit, because the process typically starts on the retail agency side. So the retail agent would initiate the submission to you, and uh, by definition, you know the retail agent would use one of the agency management system um, out there, and uh, that uh, that that only produces that court data. So by definition, whatever that agency management system is, they will only have a court based data because that's how those system architects. They will not have uh, you know data that is specific to you. But uh, even if your program um, is not a court based. Chances are, let's say it's a general liability or, or property type of um, uh, uh, program, uh, it still uses the same, a lot of the same data that exists on on those corresponding accord forms. So you you would get the benefit of uploading some percent of the data that is relevant to you. So it, so it's not a hundred percent solution. You will not be able to extract non-accord data from any management system, not because of the limitation of affiliate, but simply because those agency management systems do not capture anything but accord-based data. That's how they, uh, but how they build. But again, uh, once that data gets transferred into you, it will map into your system. Maybe it's thirty percent of the data that you need. Maybe it's sixty percent, depending on you know the circumstances. You know, still you still get the benefit of that. Over 20 years in the space on standard lines and all have struggled, CPAP, Insure Zone, Noodle with carrier specific questions, how do you handle that? Well, uh, again, so that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's an excellent question. So, and our approach is the one that I've just described um, a, a minute ago. So we only focus on uploading accord-based data 
uh, not because of the limitation of our system, I repeat, but because that's the only data that's been captured uh, on, on the retail agency side in the first place. But then we transfer them over into your system, and they still have to go through your system, a point of sale system, and complete all the additional questions that are part of your program and part of your user interface experience. But at least they don't have to key in, you know, whatever the common least common denominator of the data that is captured through the court. And you know, the very least, you know, the uh, uh, insured name, address, you know, the basic information will definitely flow over. Whatever else is captured on that court form will flow over. The rest they will have to key in in your system. Uh, so it's not the perfect solution, but it's uh, you know it's the best that we can do, and it still uh, you know provides uh, we think a tremendous amount of value. How would you have uh, handle supplemental apps non-accord? Um, same same thing. Um, so we, we we can provide a more kind of custom solution on a case by case basis, more on a professional services basis, and mapping of the accord form into accord XML like type of because by definition the supplemental form will be have will have data that is not you know kind of outside of the accord and the accord XML have a uh, way to extend uh, their uh, their specification to include those custom fields. Ho however, you know, uh, you know, you kind of need to step back and think about what you're trying to solve. If you're trying to solve an issue of easing uploading of data from retail agents, and they only have uh, a court-based data, as uh, as I already mentioned, data, perhaps your best bet is to upload that, and then uh, and then have them key the rest of the data that typically goes in supplemental into your own system. If you, you know, if you buy, a, let's say, points of system uh, solution, portal solution from us, that's exactly how a system works, is uh, you would breach a court based data and, you know, it pre-fills whatever the 20, 30 percent or maybe 60, 70 percent, and then uh, whatever they're outside of that, they you would follow your interface to complete that data. And as a byproduct of that, they can produce the supplemental forms and such like that. So uh, we think that's, uh, you know, that's the best approach on this. Do you combine multiple Accord forms with multiple lines of business into one Accord XML output, or does it come to us with multiple pieces of the Accord XML? Yeah, it will be a one Accord XML. It's uh, part of the Accord specification. It will be something called Accord XML package. Uh, and that's how Accord XML is uh, structured and architected. So uh, let's say uh, it would include data from general liability or you know property, commercial auto, all wrapped up into one Accord XML, Accord XML package, which is basically composite of all those different sections that uh, um, um, that, that that you're transferring. I'm aware that you have a pre-built integration with Accenture Duck Creek. Is that something we should ask Accenture for, or do you have provided, uh, or do you provide the mapping integration? Yeah, we work uh, we work with um, um, Accenture Duck Creek uh, together, kind of jointly. So you can inquire through us or uh, through Duck Creek. Uh, but either way, uh, we'll uh, you know we'll write to you to to the appropriate people on both our side and their side to make sure you take advantage of that uh, integration that we've done with them. Can supplemental apps be uploaded in Uplink? Already kind of answered that. So we can do it. We, we, we don't think um, it's, uh, it's relevant uh, because, again, supplemental apps need to be completed somewhere, and they cannot be produced by agency management systems. So somebody has to key the data in somewhere. And, uh, and so why have them you know, complete a supplemental form if you can have them you know, send to your point of sale system and enter that data there anyway and produce a supplemental form. But we can discuss that offline as well. Any way to handle handwritten accord forms? Uh, we, we do not currently support it. And the reason is it's a limitation of the OCR technology is just uh, too unreliable for that. Will this work with CAM online? Yes, it will. Would you consider taking requests to use your OCR software to translate non-accord forms into XML, for instance, translating PDF commission files into XML that would uh, load into our management system? 
The answer is yes, it's more on a professional services basis, meaning that you would need to estimate the scope and give you kind of a custom quote for what that kind of a specific custom project uh, would cost and how would you do it. Okay, we're down to our last two questions. Uh, you mentioned a web service which includes building programs online for an additional cost. Can you expand on this and would this allow for an agency to make a carrier system available to Appulate users to provide indications from that specific carrier? Okay, there's a couple of questions there kind of wrapped into one. So we do provide a web service. Uh, when, we, when we refer to web service, we refer to the implementation that the carrier, typical market carrier and MGA can do to kind of wire our solution into their system through the use of web services. Uh, you know, the details of that probably, uh, you know, a little too hard to describe on this kind of call. Um, so, but um, if you want to provide a solution to upload the data from the agency management system, uh, so there, the way of doing that, it would still involve the web services. And so we, it's part of you know, our implementation. We have all the documentation how to do it. But uh, basically, the mechanism for the retail agent to engage, uh, to engage the submission would be either the print driver, uh, as Vanessa showed, or, or, or email. Great, and the last question, which actually I'll take, we're looking for a class on how to use Appulate as our agency is already using Appulate with success. We need training for new employees. Please email support at appulate.com with your information, and I'll make sure to get back to you with some training options. All right, so at this time, we've answered all of the questions. If there are any questions that come up after the webinar, please feel free to email us, sales at appulate.com, and we'll answer those for you. Again, look out for an email from our sales team with additional information, including a link to this webinar, which you can share with your colleagues. Thank you so much, all of you, for your time today, and thank you to uh, my team as well, Dimitri and Kevin. I appreciate it. Yep, thank, thank you very much, everyone.